A year after marijuana was legalized, Albuquerque now has more pot shops than liquor stores. Seems like they're in every strip mall and they just keep coming, but not all of them will be staying in business. In a News 13 investigation, Ann Perrette looks at the market and what some retailers are doing to get an edge. The attention to detail outside and Inside his store is evident. I, I pre roll all mine by hand. Andre Galarza will do anything to see this business succeed because he gave everything to open it. We literally put our entire retirement, mine and hers, and we are literally what you call all in. The Galarzas opened their mom and pop pot shop, 505 Farms, in December. It's a cannabis micro business, meaning they can only grow 200 plants. So, all this flower I've grown. So we only support New Mexico grown, New Mexico extracted, New Mexico business period. Galarza says a lot of their customers are also local from the surrounding neighborhood. Some walk-ins, many repeats, which had him feeling more confident they'd succeed. A high Galarza was writing until he learned a larger company is working to move into that old car sales lot just two blocks down here on Lomas. Yeah, there's no sleep. I mean, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's terrifying. The city previously denied the location to Relief Cannabis Company last summer because it would be within 600 feet of an existing pot shop. But last month, the company asked the zoning hearing examiner for an exception to the rule. Galarza and other nearby cannabis businesses laid out their concerns. There were properties that I passed on that were better than the property I purchased, but they were located next to a dispensary. But I was playing by the rules. Relief argued using a vacant building, they'd be revitalizing the community. We would be obviously putting back into it, into the community, redeveloping this area. Um, they, they also employ local folks. Two weeks later, Galarza received notice. Zoning decided Relief Cannabis can move in. It'll be the company's second location. Galarza's currently working on an appeal. The city says it's received 20 other requests for exemptions to the 600 foot rule. 14 of those received the go ahead so far. Galarza questions the point of the ordinance he once considered a security blanket. They have more resources than you have, so let's park right next to you and put my resources versus your resources and let's see who wins. Because their math is saying, I think that other store is not doing as well as they could and I can do it better. And in some cases, we're seeing that the new stores are right. Outside of City Council, Pat Davis is the co-founder of Weeds Cannabis Consulting Service. With this role and having been involved in the industry for years, we asked him about the status of what appears to be a saturated recreational cannabis industry in Albuquerque. The number of stores, the number of licenses statewide has far exceeded even the most optimistic projections we had when we were looking at what we thought this might be before the law passed. Take a look. KRQE mapped out the locations of every approved retail license location in the city. As of April, a year into legalization, the city's said yes to 186 retailers, a third of those within the last six months. We have just 146 liquor stores, by the way. Albuquerque has about two, two and a half times more stores per capita than the market is probably going to allow. And that probably means that next year we're going to see roughly a third of these stores probably won't be in business or never opened in the first place. And another third of that two years from now. That would mean by next spring, dozens of stores closing in Albuquerque and others that just couldn't open. Because Davis says while it's easy to get the $2,500 retail license, regulations and other costs create a challenge. Some of those folks that got in early, the first ones on the best locations in town, they're doing great. They have lines around the store when they open in the morning. They're open late and you see their big social media presence. They're doing great. But there aren't a lot of great addresses anymore. Another reason why, he says, we're seeing the request to move within 600 feet of an established retailer. Davis believes for the smaller stores to avoid getting cannibalized, they need to team up or attract customers here, so in a different way. Here's a, some of the selection of our product line. Um, so there'll be an attendant here being able to serve people, um, either their concentrates or their edibles. We're standing inside the Enchanted Botanicals Cannabis Consumption Lounge. I think there's a, a lot of different ways that you would be able to 
um, enjoy this, this space, whether you're here to smoke a quick joint or whether you're here to you know, have a meeting with your CEO of your other cannabis business. The Amistoy brothers were the first to get their retail location approved by the city, a spot on Central in Knob Hill they purchased a year before cannabis became legal. The pair built this consumption lounge into the original design because they believe this is where the industry is headed. And it's not just going to be somewhere to come get high, right? We're going to have classes weekly, you know, we're going to be doing yoga, we're going to be doing um, movie nights. Pierre tells me their HVAC system sanitizes the air so the typical cannabis smell won't exist in or outside the building. A security guard will always be on duty and employees are trained to prevent overconsumption. Because we've really completed the supply chain and protected um, what we've built, uh, it would be really, really hard to, to take us out. <laughs> and Perrette, KRQE investigates. The city has already approved five other requests to open cannabis consumption areas that have not yet opened.